There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Disney. This has probably been one of the worst weeks I think we've ever seen for them. Multiple gigantic L's for the company. I mean, it started off with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That thing is now at 52%. It did hit as low as 43% at one time. Then it kind of went back up, and I would expect it to probably hit around 65% when everybody has a chance to see it. But as of right now, the only people that have seen it are the people that have been to that film festival. So, you know, they haven't had their usual shills come in and review it. And once they do, I expect the score to rise by at least another 15 points. I I think it could hit 65, 70. It's going to depend on what the shills want to do when they when they review it. But as of right now, 52%. And I do believe a lot of these reviews, especially the Variety one that called out Phoebe Waller-Bridge saying that people were bored in the theater and whispering when she was talking and they tried to deliver jokes. It got no response from the crowd. It's just not a good, not a good actress. And uh, she's not very good to look at either. I don't understand how she keeps getting all these roles, to be honest. And they think that she's going to be able to carry the franchise without Harrison Ford. Press X to doubt on that one. So another thing about this movie, I want you to understand, it's also one of the most expensive movies ever made at $300 million. That is crazy. Crazy. Now, a lot of people are saying that the reason that the budget for this movie was so high is because of all the reshoots. And I think that there might be something to that. We do know for a fact that they reshot the ending of this movie. John Williams let that out during one of his concerts where he talked about, they called him up, we want to reshoot it, can you rescore the ending? Though they tried to lie and say that didn't happen, but why would he lie about that? Why would John Williams lie about that? That doesn't make any sense. And it was such a casual thing when he was up there talking about it. I think he said something and wasn't supposed to. And then they tried to run a little bit of damage control. But, yeah, Dial of Destiny becomes one of the most expensive movies ever made. This is back in February. $300 million. And when you take in marketing and all that stuff, you're probably going to need $800 million for this movie to make money. $800 million. That's a lot of money. Now, will it make that? It could. I mean, nostalgia is a pretty powerful thing, but I don't think it's going to have good word of mouth. I don't think a lot of people are going to like this because it kind of looks like it's going to be Phoebe Waller-Bridge making fun of old man Indiana Jones the entire movie, and they're going to use him to prop her up. And that's not what people are looking for when it comes to the Indiana Jones movie. Who is there to see that? I'm certainly not there to see that. I could give a shit about Phoebe Waller-Jones. I want to see Harrison Ford. That's what I'm there to see. But Disney has, well, Lucasfilm Disney has quite the history of bait and switch when it comes to their movies. And I totally believe, totally believe that they would use Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones to push over Phoebe Waller-Bridge, thinking that that's going to make people want to go see her movie. Uh, Newsflash, Disney. That ain't going to work. No one is going to see this movie and going to walk out of it saying, boy, oh boy. I hope that Phoebe Waller-Bridge lady gets another movie soon. No, it's not going to happen. No, I'm sorry. So, this is just part of Disney's problem. I I think they know that they're in the shitter because not just this movie, they also fired or at least took Jeff Loveness off of Avengers Kang Dynasty. You know, the guy uh, who wrote the failure known as Quantumania. The guy whose most experience as a writer was working on 
the Jimmy Fallon show or something, or was it Colbert? He was maybe it was Jimmy Kimmel. He wrote for one of the late night people. That's like the most experience he has. It's like somebody watched his his Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel skits and said, "Boy, oh boy, we need this guy to come in and write multi million dollar movies." This is the guy. <laughs> you know, it starts with the writer. They get all these dark shit writers that nobody's heard of. There's so many of these comic book movies now that have nobody directors, nobody writers, people that they grab off of documentaries with zero experience, and they're like, this is who we need. This is who we need to to write our stuff. This is just a joke. And then look at this with the Disney Little Mermaid remake. This has been floating around, and I got to say, holy shit. Listen to this. Remember the swamp? Remember my song in the swamp when I was like, wah, chicka, wah, wah, chicka, wah, wah. I remember. Uh, that's Aquafina. Aquafina, by the way, has a rap song in The Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh. We're one week away, I think, right, to finding out how this movie does at the box office. I can't wait to see how this does. Will people go out in droves to see this pile of shit? That's what I want to know. I think the first weekend will be good, and the second weekend is going to have a drop off because of bad word of mouth. Listen to that again. Listen to this. This is a real clip. Remember the swamp? Remember my song in the swamp when I was like, wah, chicka, wah, wah, chicka. That's a real song. And then, finally, you know that the Star Wars theme hotel shut down. And you take all of this, all of this bad news, and here's the kicker. Stock gets downgraded. Disney stock slumps on Wall Street, downgrade citing near-term uncertainties. That's what it all leads to, ladies and gentlemen. So you've got a big financial group downgrading the stock because of uncertainties. And does that shock or surprise you? I mean, they've had a lot of bad news come out this past week. It kind of makes me wonder if stockholders could do anything because of the fact that's like you just had this earnings call and now all of this shit comes out. The Star Wars Hotel was the biggest one. That wasn't talked about at all during the earnings call. Now, there's only a small change in their stock. But the fact that it's been downgraded, that's what really says, like, whoa, to me. They're downgrading the stock. So I know that there's some lawsuit about fraud that's come up. I haven't watched. I saw Legal Mindset did a video on it. He's been really all over this stuff. I've been meaning to go watch it uh, to see what that's all about. But I think that there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. They just had something. They said they're not going to build their housing and they're trying to blame DeSantis and shit. Like, man, this company is in a lot of trouble. I don't, they're not going to bankrupt anytime soon or, or, you know, have to take too drastic of measures, but you know, things aren't going well after all of this shit that's happened. Their stock getting downgraded and citing, and, and the group citing near term uncertainties kind of says a lot. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out my Locals. There's a link in the description. It's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube. They'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.